March 30th, 2016, Wednesday within the octave of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood and walked around and went into the temple with them walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. March 30th, Wednesday of Easter week. The first reading comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. In chapter 2, we heard about how Peter proclaimed the Kerygma on Pentecost Sunday. Today, we hear about how Peter and John go to the temple and they heal a cripple. Now, the idea is that they're continuing the ministry that Jesus did. And in fact, Acts of the Apostles is volume 2 of a two-volume series. Volume 1, What Jesus Did in the Flesh, Volume 2, What He Did Through the Church. The crippled man is begging, and they can give him neither silver or gold, but they're able to heal him. That this is the power of the Holy Spirit working through them, the same power that will be at work when they proclaim the Gospel. The Gospel is from Luke 24, 13-35. This is the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. We don't know exactly where Emmaus is. There's a lot of theories. It's a short distance outside of Jerusalem. And two disciples are walking along. One of them is named Cleophas, and we don't have the name of the other. Maybe it's an indication that we're walking along with them. They're bemoaning the fact that Jesus died, but it seems as if they're doing that more because they're disappointed. He hasn't fulfilled their expectation. And Jesus who appears to them but is not recognized. There are three episodes after the resurrection where he's not recognized. Here, in the garden to Mary Magdalene, and when the disciples are fishing. Other times he is. They can touch his wounds. He eats fish with them. Here he's not recognized, but he explains to them how the Messiah had to suffer and die. Well, when they get to an inn, he's going to pass on, and they invite him to share an evening meal with them. At the breaking of the bread, they recognize Jesus. And breaking of the bread is a symbolic phrase for the Eucharist. And he disappears from their midst. And they recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread and also in the breaking of the word. They say, didn't our hearts burn within us as he explained scripture? As we grow in Christian faith, that's how we come to know who Jesus is. The breaking of the word, study of the word of God and listening to it and meditating upon it. And then the breaking of the bread, sacrament. They ran to tell the eleven that Jesus appeared to them, and the eleven say, yes, he appeared to Simon. And the implication is he appeared at the same time, because Jesus, risen from the dead, is no longer subject to the limitations of time and space. He can appear in two places at one time. We call that bilocation. And may God bless us.